Welcome back, fellow prisoners, to another GTFO guide. This time we'll be talking about the terminal, hacking, and how to get past security doors with your host, Shade of the Faded, from twitch.tv slash Shade of the Faded. So luckily in A1, right away, the terminal is always in this door to the left of the entrance. So you will always spawn there. You can run in here. The terminal is kind of a scary thing for a lot of new players because... It's a little bit advanced when you first look at it, and I'll, it's good to learn now so that you, you always want someone on your team that understands how to use the terminal, especially as a new player, so hopefully this guide helps out. This is what the terminal looks like, and we're just going to go ahead and access it. We're going to start by typing in commands, and this shows us everything we can do, and it provides examples. So for example, you can type in query or detailed information about an object in the floor inventory. So the way you use that is, for example, you can query the HSU, which is HSU underscore 352, which is in the top left. That is the DNA sample. It will always be HSU underscore, but the number will change. So if we type in query HSU underscore 352, what it does is it searches for the item in the level. So it says that the item is malfunctioning, that it's in location zone 52, and the ping is out of range. We have to get to zone 52 to get close enough to find the item. And then it provides some additional lore stats, like that it's male, his name's Derek Lee, or Lee Derek, he's also 54. What you can do as well is you can ping, for instance, the HSU 352. Now, if we were in uh, a zone closer to it with a terminal, when you ping items, the item will make a pinging noise for your players to find. So you can ping things like um, people's ID. You can ping I or sorry, you can ping ID for instance, and it will ping the name. You can ping key one two three. It will ping that item, which helps your players find stuff. So we're gonna clear the screen. Hit commands again. The other thing you can do is list. You type in list. It will show you everything in the level. So you can see different doors, security numbers, the key. So it says key underscore black underscore 750. That's in the middle of the pile of words there. But basically what you want to do is you want to keep track of things like how many med packs are there? How many ammo packs? Where are they? Because you can look for, say, tool refill underscore 330, right? Oh, it will list the all the items in there too. And sometimes if the level is big, there will be a lot. So if we query, for instance... Um, that tool refill. So if we type in tool underscore refill underscore 857, what this does is it searches for that specific item. So we know in zone 52, there will be a tool refill, which we can use for sentries and stuff like that. So we're just going to go ahead and clear the screen again, open up commands. And basically, that's how you use the terminal. You can query to look for items. You can list. You can even list, say, zone underscore 52. You can list specific zones. So in zone 52, those are the items in that zone and various things like that. So the terminal is very useful to learn because that's how you can search for items. That's how you can see where items are and where, like to, what zone they're in, stuff like that. You can ping items for your other players to find. And that's basically the terminal in a nutshell. Down the road, there are two more terminal commands, which you will basically use in C1 and I believe D1. And what that does is you type reactor underscore startup. It will start a reactor. And then you will have to type in reactor underscore verify and then a four letter random word such as but. So what that does is it will, uh, without spoiling it, that's just a command you will have to input into the terminal at a reactor down the road. So those are basically the main terminal commands. And now we're going to move on to hacking. So now that we've got the terminal out of the way, there is a box here. Hacking is really easy. Right now, there is only um, one hacking minigame, and not every box is a hackable box. So you hold it. The way you hack is you wait, and when it's in the orange, you left click or fire, and boom. You have to do this three times, and currently, um, if you fail, for instance, it will bring you back to a previous one. And it does not alert the room if you fail, currently. I think it should for the high risk, high reward, but it doesn't um, currently, and I don't know if they will make it do that. But either way, 
there will be more hacking mini games for now there's just that one we successfully did it so we just open and get the meta pack okay so now that we have hacking out of the way and the terminal out of the way by the way the terminal is something to practice and learn but once you get it being a good terminal player is huge and groups will always want you because a lot of people don't want to bother learning the terminal or it seems too confusing and at first it is because it doesn't specifically explain unless you just like read and know like you know it's just practice basically but once you get it it'll make a lot more sense so last and not least we're gonna go to the security door and because we're not looking to actually win the game here um, this is just an example so when you activate a security door what it does is it makes an alarm and it sends out a little line it's a white line and it will make four red circles you have to stand in those scans and you can do it either solo or with four people or you can have people uh, defend while two people or three people do the scans it doesn't matter you don't all have to be on the scans at the same time that is a misconception a lot of new players have you just have to get these scans done it doesn't matter if you're all standing on them and whatnot also when you activate an alarm door if it has the red warning alarm detected it will alert a horde so what we're going to do is set up for this room and we are going to close this door as an example oh we missed that box is this is a hack box okay we'll get it so again hacking right now it doesn't mean anything to fail you will just be able to open them i think in the future maybe they should make it kind of a risk reward thing but we got more glow sticks so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sentry facing the door and if you have a mine you can put your mine here and it will shoot a red line across the door but you want to do that on the inside of the door that way when they burst through finally if they do they'll trigger the mine and it will explode the whole group trying to get in as for sentry placement you want to place it either here so that it faces the door because when you close the door the monsters and you set the alarm off they're all going to run into here and if you have the sentry here or if you have it here for instance it will shoot everything in front of it so when the door is closed the monsters will try to get through and the sentry will keep shooting them because they are in front of the door so now we are going to activate the door you can also see foam it as well which is extremely helpful um, in reinforcing it and also getting the uh, past the alarm so we're going to close this and as an example um, we are going to activate the alarm. Oh, and before we start this, I just realized another important thing is that... Okay, so we're going to back up. This door right here, you want to leave open for this. Oh, hey, there's a box. Because this door, if you leave it closed, the monsters will bash through it. And you need that door to be closed to get through this second security door. And if you don't have that door, it makes the run extremely hard because this one, you have to do multiple layers of a scan. Um, and if you close these two doors, the monsters always take the path of least resistance. So you always want to have the doors mainly open. Um, you can have this one closed if you want them to bash through that one, but it's uh, better just to have them all open so you don't lose any of these doors early on because these are extremely important for the second part of the A1 experience and or run, whatever you want to call it. I don't know why I said experience, but um, yeah, you want to make sure those are open because if monsters bash that door down, the second security door, they will just run in and you need to have a lot more time than them running in. So we are going to go ahead. I also uh, noticed a chest I missed and I have sea foam now. So we are actually going to sea foam this door. So you charge up, whip it at the door. A seafoam grenade will always um, fully reinforce a door. However, a seafoam launcher needs about one and a half charges. So like a full charge and then half a charge to reinforce a door. So with that done, we are going to start the scan. So this is how a scan works. Your full team has to be on this first initial circle. So make sure you're all standing right here. As soon as this is done, the... wait for it. The white line shows up you have to get all four security scans uh, if rng likes you it will put it in a good spot if it doesn't it puts it right at the door 
They're coming in, but the sea foam's doing its job. So we gotta get the scans. And again, with four players, this is a lot easier. I'm doing it solo, it's not really recommended, but luckily we're not trying to win the game. And we're done. So the door is unlocked. Do not open it yet. Wait for the horde to come in. That is really unlucky that we got that guy. So just make sure you get them. We dodge his tongue. Uh, if you don't get the alarms... Oh, there's two giants? Okay. We are going to try and survive this, but... Yeah, so that's really unlucky that two titans spawn there. But yeah, don't open the security door. Um, if you haven't done the full alarms, they will keep alerting, so make sure you get them done as fast as possible. So these are melee titans. We'll talk about them more in the next video. Basically, that's how it's done. So this door doesn't matter if it breaks open, and now the security door is done. So that is how you use the terminal, how you hack, and how you get through security doors. Obviously with more players, this is a lot easier, but as a solo, it is possible. So we're gonna go ahead, make sure you pick up your sentries from here and any other uh, equipment, make sure you didn't miss any boxes and you should be good to go through the rest of the level. So one last thing is that security doors, for instance, there's one down here. I'm gonna quickly run to it just as an example. Um, we're going to walk past the sleepers. Uh, in the next video, I'll explain more about the monster types and stuff. For now, as an example, this security door never has an alarm on it. So there's just some doors that are like scan doors, basically. The nice part, too, about this one specifically is no monsters will spawn in this room. So just a quick example. You just all have to be here. He's even going to help me out. Hey, little guy. And you just wait. Uh, you need your full team, though. It is a full team scan. And then, boom, done. And what's nice about this room, just a super helpful tip for A1 and new players. This room never has any enemies in it and always has a crap ton of lockers. So overall, that's kind of how you do the terminal, how you hack, and how you get through security doors. So... Stay safe, stay faded, I'm going to peace out, and I'll see you in the next one.